Hello, I am Ellen G.K. Rubin, a.k.a. the Pop-Up Lady, and I am standing here in my purposefully built library housing most of my pop-up book collection. I'm going to be talking to you today about my pre-1800 books. But before I do that, so many of you have been curious about the library itself. I'm going to take just a moment to show you the library. It has UV protected windows to keep the sunlight out. Most of the books are behind glass to keep the dust out. There are two radiators in this room. Uh, this is a 90 year old house and the radiators are insulated so that the intense heat does not touch the books and dry up the glue and most pop-up books are glue. Dry the glue and they pop up by themselves. All of the wood has been treated for off-gassing and so that's really the best I could do in a privately housed library. There is another room which has my office and my reference library and very dear to me are the 35 inch three ring binders that house the movable ephemera collection. In a den downstairs are the oversized books. And that's, again, the best I can do. I am not a librarian. My background, as many of you know, is in science and medicine. So here is the cursory view of the library. I'll start showing you the library here at this end with some of the older books. The bottom bank houses the foreign language books. I have 41 languages, including Braille, Arabic, Icelandic, uh, and of course, many, many others. Every shelf has a brass plate with a number, and those numbers refer to which books are on that shelf, and I have that on my online catalog, which I use FileMaker Pro. I take a little space here for some paper engineers who have been kind enough to share their mock-ups with me. I am very interested in process and like to show, especially when I do exhibitions, I like to show how these books come about. The original artwork, the ideas, the mock-ups, the nesting sheets, everything that goes to the finished product. The smaller drawers, of course, hold smaller items. I am fortunate enough to have original art, and that original art helps me tell the story. Some shelves have series books, like the Hallmark series or the Random House series. The Disney books are put together. Bible stories are together. And this cabinet holds the Kubashta collection, which is the largest single paper engineer that I have. This buffet of open shelves have the artist books and books that are self-preserved. And in the center, is this rolling map drawer. And if I open the top drawer for you, these are the oldest books which I will be showing you today. And like Andrew suggested at the last Zoom conference, most of them are in archival boxes or are wrapped in archival foldable wrappers. And that is my library. I would be cheating you if I didn't show you the Astronomicum Caesarium. This is not the original. I've been collecting for over 30 years and have watched the original go from a half a million dollars to over a million and a quarter. But fortunately, McGraw-Hill in 1969 printed this facsimile. They literally took apart 
a book and scanned every page. And the Astronomicum Caesarium, certainly the most beautiful, movable book ever printed. Apianus, an astronomer, printed it for Charles V, who richly rewarded him. And one of his rewards is that he was given the right to legitimize illegitimate children. I guess that was a big thing then. In the original, there would be pearls along these strings as place markers. So if you ever have the opportunity to see the original, if we ever get back to book shows and one is for sale, the merchant would be happy to show it to you and you will be so happy to see it. It truly is spectacular. Done in 1540, all hand colored. Enjoy. I'm going to start off my presentation of my pre-1800 books with the oldest book in the collection. And it is from 1547 and it houses three books. Two are by Sacrobosco and he was a 13th century astronomer and educator. The book is Blind Stamp Vellum, which has these very beautiful engraved brass brackets, which I do not open and close. And so the first book in it is not by Sacrobosco, but it is very heavily annotated. A lot of marginalia, which I love to see because that just tells me how much the reader was involved in the book. There are two books by Sacrobosco in here. And the astronomy that he is explaining is from the Ptolemaic era, where the belief was that the sun re revolved around the earth. And you'll see depictions of the earth, they very much believed that the earth was round. And so there's these very delicate pointers. The book is in Latin. I don't speak Latin. I don't speak anything else but English. Sorry to tell you that. And I call your attention to this illustration, which is in all the editions of the Sacrobosco. And I've mentioned that I love process. Well, I was fortunate enough to find a woodblock from the era of that illustration. It has been authenticated for me that it is quite old and was used in one of the editions of the Sphera. And here is another Vauvel. Beautiful printed button covering the linen knot. Let me see what's behind it. Nothing. You cannot see how the linen knot is holding that in there. Well, how do the Volvels get printed? This is another Sphera, and it's an emendata, meaning that it corrects a previous edition, and it's from 1574, and here is that illustration in another size. But here are the Volvels in situ. They are printed right on the page, and it was expected of the owner or the printer to cut them out and assemble them. Curiously, there was printing on the back, which of course meant when you cut out the Volvel, you lost the printing. But that's how it was done. Next is another astronomy book by Peter Appianus, who did the Astronomicum Caesarium. This is a modern binding, but it is from 1584. 
and Apianas love to use strings to measure. And we have the movement here. And another, much more complicated. Don't ask me what all of these are used for. I would only embarrass myself. But the Volvels were measuring objects. And as you can well see, the definition of a Volvel comes from the French, meaning to turn. And it is a wheel or several wheels of paper affixed to a central spot. There's a little linen um, knot here. And it either has a die cut hole or an arrow, or in this case, both, so that the information on the base pages can come through. Unlike the Sfera, this has a decorated little button on the back that hides the knot. These books are by Ramon Lull, and he was a 13th century mystic whose dates actually overlapped with Matthew Paris, and we credit Mar Matthew Paris with inventing the Vauvel. But Ramon Lull also used Vauvels. And how he used them, not like a calendar as Matthew Paris did, he believed that if you use these letters to represent segments of man's knowledge and then turn the wheels and collated them, you can get to represent all of man's knowledge and come to know God. So this book is from 1617, though as I said, he wrote in the 13th century, but I did find a copy with the Volvels in situ, and that will help you understand how they were cut out and assembled. And in this case, there is nothing on the back, but here's where you would be putting the Volvel. This book, also with a vellum cover from 1755, was done by Jan Comenius, a Czech educator. And he wrote the first book with children's images in it. He's considered the father of the children's picture book because it was his idea in 1658 that children, in order to learn, should have pictures that go with the text. And so his books had texts in several languages and these images. And I was able to find this copy from 1755 where they actually put in a little Vauvel. And the Vauvel is very simple, showing sky and land. Well, we've now moved into the 17th century, and here is a book from 1663 for physicians, the Opera Medica. And they are using this Vauvel to decide when a person should have surgery on a particular disease or malady. Now, at the time, of the 17th century, physicians were required to learn how to do their patient's horoscope.
And that's part of what's going on here. And we have the uh, pictures of the zodiac around here. And we have a calendar. And by coordinating these together, the physician was looking for the best time to do the surgery. I know you've probably heard me say the patient probably died anyway. Associate Rene Descartes with being a physician. But here is this vellum covered book from 1664. And in it, he has shown anatomical parts and uses the flap technique. And that was very popular using flaps because it was in lieu of dissections. In most cases, physicians were forbidden to do dissections. They could only do them on executed prisoners or people who died in the poorhouse. And so there are several flap technique books in here as well. What's very special in my collection is any time I can get my hands on a manuscript. And like the annotations I showed you in the Sphera, this book on, uh, happens to be on sundials, is all hand drawn. I believe that the book was never published, but here it is on what is the best way to create a sundial. Should it be vertical? Should it be horizontal? And here is the little gnomon, you know, sundials to cast the shadow from the sun. And again, I feel the immediacy of this writer and he tied, um, he tied the knot using a playing card, which you can barely see here underneath. Also handmade manuscript. In 1706, the Sepulchrus was printed in Hebrew, and in Latin, and it shows on several pages how Jews like to be buried, what are the burial practices. And so when you lift the flap, you can see the coffins there inside. And here is another flap. This also is covered in vellum and very typical to have this uh, not printed but hand done title on the spine. Now, in the mid-18th century was a German printer called Martin Engelbrecht, and he took advantage of the peep shows that were traveling around the countryside. And he took these pieces and layer them one behind the other. So you had the feeling of perspective, which was very popular then. Now this particular one has sides on it, but so many of the Engelbrecht tunnel books or peep shows did not have sides. And each individual image was put into a slotted board so that they stood up one behind the other. The Engelbrecht tunnel books, or peep shows, were done in three sizes. There was this one is the smallest, 
There was one a little larger and one larger still. Again, being so fortunate to find the original wrapper in which it was kept. This is a very sturdy piece of paper, so I can understand how it survived. Well, Euclid was doing his mathematics much earlier, but this book from 1758 is very unusual because it allows the student to pop out each of these figures and create them so you would understand the three-dimensionality of each of the figures. He did another book, and I should say he was not the one who created these movables. It was subsequent printers, publishers, and mathematicians who did it. There's another book that has little paper structures, so when you stand them up, you understand the volume of these mathematical figures. This book is from 1758 with leather boards. I have one more book from the 18th century. It's undated. I have not yet discovered whether this is Tibetan or Mongolian, but I've been promised by a university librarian that they would find out for me. And their depiction of Buddha and the use of a Vauvel in here. Since this is a language that I can't even decide what the language is, I cannot say what this is about, but I suspect that this is the Zodiac. very heavily annotated and again a manuscript hand done well i'm just going to briefly go into the 19th century the very early 19th century to show you some really special things. This is a German friendship book. Probably many of us, or older ones like me, had these in, in school and had people sign them. And the artwork in here is nothing short of spectacular. But what attracted my attention to this one is the beehive that someone built into this. And so the beehive or the spider web had a hidden image or message underneath and someone went to the trouble for this person to uh, put it in here. The beehive is from 1809, but there are other writings in here from a little bit later. And it's actually some of the artwork, which I'm trying to show you on page one. Just really beautiful. I've already mentioned to you about manuscripts. And so this is a hand done calendar, a perpetual calendar. And it's very unusual because it has this wheel, but this narrow wheel that travels underneath a little linen rope and so you can turn it around and coordinate it and make it uh, come to the right date and here are all your little linen knots on the back I went ahead just a little too fast in that i didn't get to show you the harlequinades and these are considered the earliest books for children started by robert sayre in england in 1770. Now, 
This is a Robert Sayre Harlequinade and the Columbine. All hand colored in its original wrapper. And the mechanism was four pages. And by turning the flaps up or down, the images change and the text changes. And because of these, this flap technique, they were also called turn up books. And I hadn't meant to show you that one. I had brought, this is a facsimile so that I could handle it a little bit rougher. And you can see the image changes and the text changes, and that is how the story was advanced. This was so popular that here is a manuscript done telling a story or used as a gift for someone. William Makepeace Thackeray, the writer, came to the United States and was the guest of someone and who had young children and Thackeray created a harlequinade for these children. So that is all pre-1800. Well, that's all for my pre-1800 books. And thank you for allowing me to share them with you. I like to say I shop and share. So visit popuplady.com and maybe there are some other things I can show you. Thank you very much. Bye.